Hey guys, it's Chef Jason. It is Friday night with beef, and thank you to our friends at the Colorado Beef Council for uh, letting us go live tonight. We have got a winter comfort treat. Absolutely. Just talk about slow cooker, uh, putting this in in the morning, letting it just fill your house with amazing things. We've got some cool stuff. So thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Hey, be sure when you sign on, say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Uh, my beautiful daughter, Kate, is behind the camera today. She will be asking and answering uh, all of your questions. Well, wait, she'll be asking, I'll be answering. Uh, but let us know where you're watching from. Feel free to ask your questions and comments in there. We will get everything taken care of for you. Also, I will tell you what, thank you to all of our farmers and ranchers because I don't know if a lot of you know this, but right now it is calving season for a lot of our farmers and ranchers. So they are out there battling this ice cold weather, keeping those beautiful little calves warm, flourishing, growing, healthy, uh, hanging out with their mamas and all that good stuff. So thank you so much to all of our farmers and ranchers who are not taking a day off, who are not staying inside, being nice and warm. They are out there uh, doing all they can to make sure that their herd is well taken care of. Katie, anybody tuning in to watch? Who should we say hi to? Uh, Roger Bailthorn. Hello, Roger. Jane Ferris. Jane, nice to see you. Elizabeth Catherine. Elizabeth, how are you? Barry Swigart. Barry, good to see you. Uh, Michael DeBello. Hey, Michael DeBello, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Baru Gutierrez. Nice. That's, that's it for at the moment. All right, any questions before we get started? Mm -hmm. Nothing? No. All right, sounds good. Dynamite, where's everybody watching from? Did anybody comment? Any fun places we're missing? Uh, someone from Texas. Texas, I love it. I hope you are definitely staying warm. But All right, you guys, so tonight's recipe is just... Amazing. We are doing whiskey molasses shredded beef. This is a fantastic recipe. Like I said, uh, gives, this is going to give you some time to really enjoy slow cooker. Or if you have a pressure cooker, uh, you can take less time to do this. Now, total cook time today is about four to six hours depending on doneness. So when you get this in that crock pot or in your slow cooker, make sure you turn it on high and we're going to go about four to six hours. If you have it on low, you're looking at about eight to 10 hours, eight to 11 hours. So definitely that'll give you time to uh, get this meal started in the morning, go about your business all day long, and then come home to a healthy, delicious, wonderful dinner. Uh, we're going to start off today with a little bit of bottom round roast, also known as that rump roast. So uh, about two and a half pounds. One of the things to look for too when we buy this, Check out how much fat it has. You want to find one that's going to be a little bit less of that fat cap because we're actually going to trim this off. Uh, just makes it eat a lot better. And then look at this. You're looking at this whole roast thinking, no way this is going to cook fast. Well, don't worry about it because we're actually going to cut these into steaks and then kind of cut them into strips. And that will facilitate uh, breaking this down and helping us shred it uh, and really make it uh, cook so much easier. All right. First thing we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to go through and make kind of the, uh, not the gravy, but the barbecue sauce or the maybe a little bit of the braising liquid uh, to help get this whiskey molasses beef. So uh, the recipe, we have the link up for you in the description section. You can definitely go ahead and grab today's recipe, uh, follow along, uh, print that out. And I always say, add it to your culinary hits playlist because this is definitely a recipe we've made it how many times have we made this last week like three times <laughs> yeah this is our third time uh and we are super excited my wife was here a little bit earlier in the studio and she said reconnected just kidding we're good we're good mm -hmm. okay all right first thing we need to start with you guys is a little bit of whiskey so we're going to start off with a little bit of whiskey in here to get the party started and hey if you are a whiskey aficionado you pick the whiskey that works best for you i'm gonna add a little bit of apple cider vinegar that's gonna help that beef break down a little bit. Then we're gonna add one can of tomato paste. So we'll get this in here and get this out of here, I should say. That's gonna really help add some robustness uh, and richness to this uh, sauce that we're making. All right, then we're gonna add some dark brown sugar. Get that added in there. Molasses, because nothing screams beautiful shredded beef. Well, it's actually called whiskey molasses beef, so we're definitely gonna add some molasses, but this adds very, very good flavor as well. We get all that molasses in there. Wash that off a little bit. All right. Then we'll add some kosher salt. Uh, you can add sea salt if you want, and then we'll add some of that ground red pepper. But super, super easy. This recipe is definitely uh, a, a crowd pleaser. It's going to be easy to make. And I'll tell you what, we're going to let the slow cooker do 
all of that work. So now you can see in there, we're just gonna get this mixed up real nice and get it ready for pouring over the beef. Very easy, very, very uh, delicious. So uh, we'll get this all set, get this guy mixed in here really good, and that's it. Now, keep in mind, when you mix this, uh, when it comes time to scraping it out and getting it in the beef, use one of your scrapers, uh, use your hand if you want, but we definitely, we, we mix this. We wanna make sure we put it in the beef. All right, here we go. So we've got the beef, we've got that round roast or that rump roast. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take a very thin bladed knife here, and I'm just gonna go through and trim any of that fat or any of that cap or any connective tissue. Little bit of prep work to do. You can buy it uh, already trimmed up from your butcher if you want. Um, I chose to just do this myself, but just go through there. Make sure you get that off. A Little bit of that connective tissue, all right? And again, two and a half pounds today, so that's what we're starting with. Now, like we said, to help facilitate some cooking, we're actually gonna cut this into some steaks first. Lay those guys down like that. We're going to cut this guy this way here. Lay those down as well, and then cut here. So now we've got, kind of got four little steaks here. Then what we'll do is go through and cut these into some sticks. Get these guys divided up into some what, little one inch thick kind of pieces there. That'll help everything break down as well. Like I said, if you're cooking on high, you're gonna go about four to six hours cook time. Excuse me, if you're cooking on low, you're gonna be in that eight to 10, eight to 11 hour cook time, all right? So we'll get these guys all set. And then what we'll do, put them into the uh, slow cooker. And here's what you're gonna do, just random. You wanna put these guys in really random. Uh, I don't pack them in there. I'm not, I'm not looking to shove everything in there. I just wanna randomly set them in there because what's gonna happen is once we add the liquid, that liquid's gonna get in and around and everywhere and uh, get us all set. Now, go ahead here, that cleaned out. I'm going to use my spatula here, my rubber scraper. We'll get these guys scraped in here. Don't worry, if you look at this mixture and you think, hey, I don't know, that looks a little bit thick. Don't, don't worry, don't fret. It is going to be a little bit thick, but we are actually gonna pull some moisture out of that beef, uh, which will thin this out. So now, carefully what I'll do is mix this up. I wanna get every piece of beef coated, and I am going to keep them kind of all facing the same way. I want them all going this way just to help uh, in, in making sure they're all cooking the same as well. So let me take my gloves off here. Questions or comments there, Miss Katie? Uh, here. You're supposed to be on the comment thing. Uh, Colorado Beef Council is here. Colorado Beef Council, nice to see everyone. Luke Arnold. Hello, Mr. Luke. Roger Coverstein spent today delivering beef to local grocery stores. I love it. You know, that's, uh, Roger brings up a good point too. I wanted to make sure we mention, if you are looking for some local beef to uh, fill your fridge, you can head over to cobeef.com. That's Colorado Beef Council webpage. Uh, they've got a beef locator map, so you can click on that and find local beef. And we appreciate Roger heading out today, uh, delivering beef to local grocery stores. That is absolutely fantastic. And I bet if you get on that map and you get a hold of Roger, Roger will get beef to your house as well. Go. What cut are you using? This is a bottom round roast, also known as rump roast. And it's two and a half pounds. All right, so check it out. Here's what we have here. So we put that beef in there. We have all the pieces going this way, right? Kind of that way. And then we just added that liquid and we are set to go. Now, what I will do is go into the slow cooker, like I said, into the slow cooker on high, you're about four to six hours. On low, you're about eight to 10. If you want to do this in a pressure cooker, you are actually going to be about, because this is about two and a half pounds, you're looking at about 20 minutes per pound on high. But for today's recipe, we are in the slow cooker. Now, if you have a slow cooker that the lid locks down on, they say do not cook with the lid fully locked. So I will put the lid on, I will attach it a little bit so we still got room, and then we'll turn that on high and we'll let it go. Like I said, four to six hours, we will come back. Now, while that is cooking, let me go through here and uh, clean up really quick. While that is cooking, it is time to get ready to make that carrot apple slaw that we are going to uh, put on here. Now, when you're doing the shredded beef, there's a lot of options you have. Like I said, it works great if you vacuum seal it in some bags. You can divide it into portions. You have dinner tonight, and then you get that cook once, eat twice, so you can have dinner multiple nights. You can freeze it if you put it into vacuum seal bags and then simply uh, put it in boiling water to, to warm it back up again. You can do tacos. 
You can use this for nachos. You can use it for sandwiches. Imagine the fresh tater tots with some of this whiskey molasses beef on top, some cheese. You could do some tachos. They call those tater top nachos. Tachos would work good as well. But very, very versatile. So again, you know, look at this recipe as a great way to eat tonight, but also give you some good leftovers uh, for the next way, next couple nights, and also a great way to stretch your dining dollar. Okay, time to make our carrot apple slaw. What we start off with is two cups of shredded carrots, and then I've got a couple Granny Smith apples. You can use whatever apple you want. What I like about the Granny Smith is it gives it like a, a sharp little, whoo, kind of like a sour, a little bit of a bitter um, yin and yang, so to speak. We've got sweet, rich molasses beef. We've got that carrot apple slaw. You get a little pop of sweet and sour, uh, which is great. So what we'll do is trim this apple. We need about two cups of apples, which I have determined is about two medium-sized apples. So we'll just work our way around this apple. We'll get this all diced up here quick, and then we're going to go right into that bowl. And then very simple seasoning tonight uh, for that as well. Katie, anything? No. Nada? No. All right. Don't forget, too, if you're looking for today's recipe, uh, we've got that up in the description section for you. But if you're looking for other recipes, this is week number, man, I think this is week number 20. We have been doing these videos for Colorado Beef now for about 20 weeks. So head over to cobeef.com. Uh, that's Colorado Beef Council website. There's a little tab called Cooking. Click on that tab. You will find all of our videos uh, that we've done, Facebook Lives, recipes. And then we just sent over a YouTube video for this. So Beef Council is going to post a YouTube video. So if you uh, missed today our live, you can rewatch it, of course, if you want. But we have a great YouTube video coming at you to help you get this done, too. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a good dish. Beef I have, Council also just linked the recipe in the comments. I can't hear you what? Beef Council linked the recipe in the comments. Oh, okay. So uh, Tammy has linked the recipe in the comments section for you as well. So you've got that all set. You can get in there, click that recipe. Like I said, listen, you should start a uh, cookbook of all your Colorado Beef Council favorite hits. Put those in there and uh, keep them for further use. But this is a good winter dish right here. Uh, and if you're traveling, let's say you're out calving, I will tell you, put this in a mug. Uh, put it in an insulated mug or put it in a soup mug. Put this in your cup holder. Now you've got a little uh, road trip food for your time through the pasture or your time out there looking for calves. Uh, that'll keep you warm. Okay, so two cups of shredded carrots. We've got about two cups of apples, Dice Granny Smith apples. This is, like I said, we're making a fun little slaw. And I like to do this while the beef is cooking. Um, I'll make this, get the beef in the crock pot, uh, or in your slow cooker, I should say. Uh, let it go. Let it do its thing. And then I'll make this and actually let this uh, cover it with plastic wrap, put it in the fridge. Let this melt. Let this marinate. Let it sit all day long. All right. So carrots, apples, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there, some brown sugar to counter any uh, acidity, and then a little bit of Dijon mustard, right? That gives you a nice little, whew, like little nasally pop of happiness in the Dijon mustard. All right. Get this mixed up here real quick. And I just mix it with my hands. That's all I'm doing there, just giving it a quick little mix. Trying to get everything combined in there real nice. I want to get that mustard mixed in. I want to get the uh, brown sugar in there, get the uh, cider vinegar absorbed. But then the beauty is uh, those apples will sweat just a little bit. They're going to weep a little bit of apple juice, and that will help create a little bit more of the dressing in here that will help coat this. All right. Then when you are done, we switch gloves quick. When you are done or before you're, you're ready to cover it, I'll put a little bit of salt in there, so about a teaspoon of salt, and then some fresh cracked pepper, about a half a teaspoon of that, just as a way to get some more flavor in here. Now, I'm going to leave the salt and pepper right on the top. I'm just going to leave it, let it do its thing, and like I said, we're going to cover this and then put it in the fridge and let this just melt, let it marinate, let it do its thing, and uh, for today's sake, we're actually going to leave it in front of us because now... We're going to show you uh, how to shred beef because we're going to pretend that our four to six hours are done. Ding. There we go. Did you hear that? That was the timer that was telling us the beef was ready. So let's get this guy out of our way. All right. Let me grab some gloves here again. And I want to bring the other uh, slow cooker over. This is a two slow cooker method here for our video today. So I actually started this a little bit earlier today, about six hours ago. Finished this up. And I want to show you 
um, how we're going to shred this. And Kate's going to grab the camera off the tripod here real quick, come in nice and close, because we want to show you how we shred the beef and kind of what that looks like texturally so you get to see all of those beautiful, beautiful things. All right, my dear, come on in. All right, so look at that, everyone. I'll have Kate go right over the top. That is it. That is after six, four to six hours. What I do at the four hour mark, I'm going to take my fork at the four hour mark. I'm going to go into that beef. And what I'm going to do, come on in close to the show here. What I'm going to do when I'm checking at the four hour mark is I'm going to turn it, right? I want to see if it starts to shred. If it doesn't, keep going. Do it in 30 minute intervals. Do it longer if you need. Uh, this guy, yesterday and today, make two batches in a row. Both of them took about six hours. So four to six, I guess, will depend on the uh, leanness of the beef. So come here, check this out. Here's what we do now. Now, I put my fork in there. See how I'm kind of holding one piece? And then I just go through and shred it. Then what I do is I'm actually gonna shred it in the sauce. You can do it two ways. You can take this out, shred it on your cutting board if you want. I actually like to shred it in the sauce because then I'm just gonna go through when I'm done here and mix all of this back up. The nice thing, that sauce is going to uh, mix into the beef. The beef is gonna mix into the sauce and we're gonna have quite the tasty little treat. If you want to, um, you can definitely reduce this sauce down a little further. Take that beef out, shred it. You could hold it hot and then uh, cook that sauce down a little bit. But I don't know, I kinda like it soupy. We're using pretzel buns today and the nice thing about the pretzel bun, <laughs> Kate's like, ooh. The nice thing about the pretzel buns is uh, they're a little bit soft, so they're going to absorb a little bit of that juice, a little bit of that beef happiness. You could use brioche, you could use Texas toast, uh, really anything you want, but that is my conduit. Any questions rolling in? Mm -mm. All right. Questions. Looks like everybody's just drooling tonight, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, be sure to leave your questions and comments. We will make sure we get back and do all of our uh, answering of your questions and comments later, but we are hanging out here in our kitchen studio. We built a little kitchen studio here in Littleton. Uh, we're having fun today, just hanging out with beef and it's been I've been smelling this all day long so I'm excited to uh, dig in but there you go you just go through here carefully hold the beef with a fork and then pull it and shred it the nice thing about cutting it into the steaks and then cutting it into those little pieces helps it cook faster but then it also helps it shred too so you don't get such long pieces that way you know if you're eating this on Sunday you don't want to get your church clothes dirty and this will help keep some barbecue off your chin or if you have a beard it'll definitely help keep barbecue out of your beard which is always a plus so there you go now here's what we have we just went through and mixed all this up and you can see i've got random pieces i've got some really nice big pieces and i've got some finely shredded as well i didn't reduce the sauce down at all you could tell when we first took it out it may have looked a little bit thin or may have looked a little bit soupy but the nice thing is it mixes back into that beef really really well so we're going to set this to the side we're going to show you how to build some sandwiches next right because that is Definitely. What? Was that, would you say yes? You're ready. Kate is ready for sandwiches. I am ready for sandwiches. So, like I said, we have uh, pretzel buns. If we can get them on a bag here. There we go. Beautiful pretzel buns. All right. And like I said, brioche works great. Texas toast works fantastic as well. So we'll put the bottom bun, top bun, bottom bun, and top bun. Now, grab ourselves a pair of tongs. And come on over here, Miss Kate. Check this out. Grab a nice pinch of this, right? Put that on there. Flatten it out a little bit. Another little pinch more. Don't worry about that sauce. That sauce is gonna soak right into the beet or into the uh, bun and be in a really, really good place. So that is that. They say the phone always eats first, so we got to make sure we give you a really nice picture for what do they call it? The gram, the Instagram. Just the gram. Just the gram. They call it. I'm sorry. I'm trying to become a little more hip in my. Uh, verbiage here. All right, so salt and pepper, you guys. We'll get that mixed in. This is all seasoned up. And then taste it. If you want a little more salt and pepper, add a little bit more. Then what I'll do, nice little pinch over the top here. Another little pinch over the top or on the plate. <laughs> it's just because everybody's watching. All right, then you've got that top bun just like that. You guys, that is super easy. And like I said, you don't have to make you don't have to make sandwiches by any stretch of the imagination. This is perfect on nachos, on tachos with your tater tots. Imagine putting this inside of a baked potato. Uh, you got a beautiful barbecue baked potato. You can use it in tacos, uh, sandwiches, salads, everything. And then the beauty is, look at this. 
We made two sandwiches. We've got a, a lot left over. So that cook once, eat twice really comes into play, uh, stretching your beef dollar. Uh, I think the cost for beef was like $12. So you're able to get a pretty good meal out of this, uh, feed your family, but then also stretch it as well. So, hey, thank you so much to the Colorado Beef Council for having us tonight. We really appreciate it. And thank you to all of our farmers and ranchers for supporting what we do every day in uh, celebrating the good word of beef. And then also thank you to our farmers and ranchers who are out there calving right now uh, in this cold weather and doing their best. Uh, if you go to Colorado Beef Council Facebook page, which we're on, uh, look through there and you'll see some absolutely wonderful pictures of our farmers and ranchers with calves in their trucks, calves in their homes, uh, just doing their best to keep their herd happy, healthy, uh, and surviving. Uh, and then make sure you go to cobeef.com. Uh, up in the top, we have a tab called Cooking. You can grab all of our recipes that we've done. We are now on week 20, so that we've got 20 really fun recipes up there for you. Uh, and some video links, too, to some YouTube videos as well. I'm Chef Jason Morse for the Colorado Beef Council. Thank you for hanging out with us. Don't forget to head up there, grab today's recipe. We've got it in the description section. We've got it in the comment section. And then, hold on, i got to do a little quality control. I'm very excited about this because, like I said, I, uh, I've been waiting for this all day. Have a great day, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Cheers.